Hello and welcome to AzureMonk.com. In this video, we'll talk about persistent volumes, persistent volume claims, and storage classes in Azure Kubernetes services. In our previous video, we talked about volumes and how they are tied to a pod lifecycle. In other words, when a pod is deleted, the volume is also deleted. However, in certain use cases, when there's a requirement to persist the data, even after the pod is deleted, we would want to look at options such as persistent volumes. Persistent volumes can be provisioned in two ways, the static way and the dynamic way. We'll first look at the workflow for provisioning a persistent volume using the static way. An administrator of the cluster or a member of the ops team would provision a pool of persistent volumes. Now, these persistent volumes are an abstraction of the underlying physical storage. In this case, Azure disks or Azure files. Let's zoom in on a sample YAML file definition for a persistent volume. Some of the key parameters of the persistent volumes are the labels. We'll talk about why this is important in just a bit. The storage capacity, which tells us how big a pool that we want to carve out. Access mode specifies information on the kind of access modes that we want this persistent volume to have. It could be read write many, read write once or read only many. And then we have persistent volume reclaim policy. We'll talk about this in just a bit. And then the type of storage, it could be Azure files or Azure disks and the details like the name of the storage account, keys, etc. Similar to this, the ops team can provision multiple persistent volumes for different use cases and for different apps with a combination of labels, storage sizes, storage types, and access modes. These persistent volumes in the pool is now in an available phase. That is, it is available to be claimed. Now that we have the pool of persistent volumes ready, the dev team goes ahead and references a persistent volume claim in the volume section of the pod. Let's zoom in on the pod YAML to see how this is defined. We see that there is a reference to a persistent volume claim. The dev team now creates a persistent volume claim based on the storage size the app needs as well as the access mode that the app needs. This lets the development team not worry about or manage the underlying storage. The annotation here is important if you're going to use the static provisioning route, it essentially tells Kubernetes not to dynamically auto provision storage, but pick a persistent volume from the existing pool. Great. When this persistent volume claim is created, the Kubernetes controller automatically searches for the best suited persistent volume from the pool of available persistent volumes based on the size and access mode. Until it finds a match, the persistent volume claim will be in a pending state. Once it matches a persistent volume to a persistent volume claim, the persistent volume is now bound to the persistent volume claim. But let's say the app team doesn't want the persistent volume claim to pick from a pool of randomly available persistent volumes, but they wanted to pick exactly the persistent volume that was created for that specific app. The, day, the way they would do this is using a label selector. Once the labels on the persistent volumes and the label selector on the persistent volume claim matches, the persistent volume gets bound to the persistent volume claim. Remember, this persistent volumes are not namespaced, but the pods and the persistent volume claims needs to be in the same namespace. The pod is now able to store data in a persistent volume outside of a pod lifecycle. Great. Now let's say the app is retired and the organization no longer needs the app. When the app, that is the pod and the persistent volume claim gets deleted, what happens to the persistent volume and the underlying storage? Well, this depends on the reclaim policy that is defined on the persistent volume. If the reclaim policy is set to retain, the volume will change the phase from available to released. However, the data will still be available and no other pod can claim this particular persistent volume. If on the other hand, 
the reclaim policy is set to delete, the persistent volume as well as the underlying storage will be deleted as soon as the persistent volume claim is deleted. This is all great, but the ops team is getting tired of provisioning the persistent volumes for each and every app manually and was wondering if there's a better way to do the provisioning the storage dynamically. The way we would provision persistent volumes dynamically is using what we call storage classes. Let's look at the workflow for how a storage class would work. This time around, the administrator or the ops team does not need to provision the persistent volume in advance. The dev team would still reference the persistent volume claim from the pod. The persistent volume claim this time would be slightly different. It would have the access mode requirements and the storage size requirements. However, additionally, this would also have another field called storage class name. This storage class defines the different tiers of storage available to the cluster. Now that the persistent volume claim is created, it will start looking for a storage class. In AKS, we have certain inbuilt storage classes. Number one, default. The default storage class creates a standard SSD based managed disk. If you don't specify any storage class, this is the storage class that the persistent volume claim will try to create. This is why it is important for our static provisioning mode to define the annotation because if you did not, it will automatically take the default storage class and not a persistent volume from the pool of existing persistent volumes. And then we have managed premium, which creates a premium storage based managed disk. We have Azure file, which creates a standard SSD based file share and Azure file premium which creates a premium storage based Azure file share. Now that the persistent volume claim is referencing a storage class, which is inbuilt, this storage class in turn will go ahead and create an appropriate matching persistent volume and will always bind the persistent volume that it creates with the persistent volume claim that requested it. All of the inbuilt storage classes that we have in AKS today have a reclaim policy of delete. That is, when the persistent volume claim is deleted, the persistent volume as well as the underlying storage is deleted. However, you can also create your own custom storage class too, if you need to, with a different reclaim policy and different variation. For example, you can have a custom premium retain, which has a reclaim policy of retain but at the backend storage is still going to be a premium SSD based managed disk. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.